Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday evening sip and sew. I'm Kelsey from Just So. Um, this is kind of like a free class that I do every week, every Thursday evening at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, thank you so much for joining me, whether you are joining me live or you are re-watching the video. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so today we are going to be making the farmhouse apron. And um, the apron is interesting because the way that the pattern is set up is instead of giving you like the positive space to cut, it's giving you the negative space to cut. So it's a little bit unique that way. Um, so you have all of these templates. If you so you you do need to purchase the pattern. You have all these templates. I've already cut out my templates and I have cut out my fabric according to this portion of the cutting. We will do all of this part together, but you do need to have this portion of the cutting complete um, and your templates cut out. So that's where I'm starting from today. Hi, Jean and Susan and Evelyn. Oh, awesome. You're very close by. Great. <clears throat> okay, so um, if you followed all of those cutting instructions, then you should have um, your the rectangle piece of your pocket, two bibs, and a skirt, um, as well as all of your straps and everything. Um, so we're going to cut out the skirt first and then we'll cut out the templates to every the template pieces from everything else. Hi Elise and Linda, welcome. I hope this is helpful for you guys. So I've never actually made this before. Um, so I'll be doing it for the first time with you guys. Um, but I did read through all of the instructions, which I encourage you to do as well. Um, because there are a few points where I had to reread it a couple times to, um, try to visualize what it was saying. Um, so that's all I have for you. Hey, Vicki. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and point you guys to my floor, actually, because I don't have a big enough cutting space to do, um, to do this on. So I've laid out my skirt and my template on the floor, so I'm going to transitioning you guys down here real quick. One second. Okay. Da, da, da. Alrighty. So here's what I have right now. I have my, this is my skirt piece that I have cut out um, the rectangle according to the cutting instructions at the top of the page here. It's 40 by 23 inches. And then I have my two templates. So template A is actually three pieces that you tape together. I went ahead and did this because I felt it was pretty self-explanatory. There's a nice diagram here that shows you how to tape it together. Um, but this is what it should look like. And what we're going to do is, um, what I think is interesting about this pattern is most patterns will have, you know, the actual apron to cut out. But this has the negative space outside the apron, um, which is pretty smart. So, um... I have my fold down here, so I always like to double check. This is my fold. I know where the fold is because this, um, it will tell you to place on fold right here. So I'm going to go ahead, position this part on the fold flush with my raw edge here. And then I'm going to just pin at a couple more points. I have my windows open tonight because it is just so nice out. So you can probably hear the kids playing outside. <laughs> all the neighborhood kids. They've been out all day. Okay. <clears throat> here is the uh, template B pinned right here. Um, another thing to note is if your fabric is directional, make sure that this is the top of your direction. So it's all um, the top is here and the bottom is here. So keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to this template, template A. So this one, it says position this part of the template at the apron side raw edge. So this is my raw edge. And so it's very helpful. It tells you many, many times um, and many different ways how to position these templates. So hopefully you guys won't run into any issues there.
Okay. Make sure that it's flush. All of these sides. This is probably my least favorite part of garment sewing is having to pin the pattern in place. It's one of my least, it's one of my most favorite things about quilting is that there's no templates unless you're doing like curve piecing or something. So, okay. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I also pin close to this curve because that's actually where I'm cutting. So I don't want a lot of gaps here. And this is my raw edge, keeping it there. Okay, and then it gets very, very narrow here, almost just a sliver of paper. So I'm just going to pin at the curve and just one more to kind of keep this straight. Um, if any of you are local and you're planning on coming to the quilt show on Saturday, Quilters Day Out in Burlington, Kentucky, we'll have some of these patterns there as well. Um, but they are available on our website, justsostudio.com, if you don't already have yours. We've had it on the live now for two different weeks, but I know some of you guys might still not have it, or maybe you wanted to watch this first um, to see if it's something you wanted to get. All right, so here I have my shears, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it on the curved side of both of these templates. This is the part that always makes my heart race because, you know, you just wanna make sure you're doing it right. Can't go back after you've cut it. Although I do have a lot of extra of this fabric because I just love it so much. Okay, there's that one. I'm gonna cut this one now. Hi, Jean. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Hi, Debbie. How's it going? We are just cutting out our apron. So the part I'm cutting right now is going to be the bottom hem, and the part at the top is what's going to connect to our waistband. Okay. Thanks, Barb. This is um, this is some art gallery fabric from the Bookish Collection. I love it. I have it. It came in two colorways, and I have both of them because I loved it so much. <clears throat> and I actually, I don't usually um, like combine fabric collections very often, just because I usually love how the collections are put together themselves. But tonight, I am using this from Art Gallery. And then I am using um, a gingham fabric from Moda's Effie's Woods collection. So I combined not only collections, but also Moda and Art Gallery. Okay, so now that we have this cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to um, cut from this corner to this corner. And that's going to give us the side of the skirt here. Um, it says to use a rotary cutter. I don't have a ruler that big right now to go from one side to the other. So I'm going to, um, I was trying to figure out if I can fold it in half. That's usually what I do, but I don't know if that would mess up because of it. It's on a curve. I can't tell if that would make it curved. I think, I think I won't do that. So, um, I'm actually going to draw a line on here instead of cut with the rotary cutter. So I can just make sure it's going to be straight. So I just kind of drew tack marks in between um, the two lines before I could join them together. 
This is a friction pen I'm using. It's an iron off pen. And I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm keeping it folded right here just so that I can make these identical. All right. So, voila, here we have our skirt. Look how cute. Okay, but we still have some more template stuff to cut out for the pocket and the bib. So let's do that. Set this aside. I need to iron the crease out of that. How is everybody doing tonight? I don't have a fun drink to share with you guys because um, I didn't have time to find one. So I just have boring old water for my sip tonight. Although one of the things that Matthew and I got on our registry was a like cocktail make like kit to make cocktails. So he, he said, oh, once we're married, then... When you have your sip and sews, I can make, try a new cocktail from a recipe book and make you the drink for your sip and sew. And I thought that was so cute. So maybe in the near future, we'll have some more fun drinks on here. Okay. Let's do this. All right. So this is my pocket piece using template C. Use template C to trim all four corners of the pocket. So um, we are making the curve like outward. So we're going to use the template differently than we used it last time. We're going to position this here. And I'm going to draw on here again. and keep it folded. Actually, I'll pin it so it stays this way. And draw the other template right here. Make sure it's flush on all of these sides. Looks like it. So now I will use my scissors and I'll trim away two corners at a time. So here's our pocket piece. Looks just like the uh, picture in the pattern. So I'm going to set that aside as well. I think we're going to be folding that in half to make our pocket. Um, okay, so now for both of your bib pieces. These are my straps. Set these aside. So we have two bib pieces the same size. <clears throat> for both of them, we need to cut out the neck hole and we need to make it an angled piece. So we're going to fold this in half so that we have our long side here. It actually, I wish it told you which way was supposed to be the long side and which way was the short side. It doesn't tell you, but just using my common sense. I assume it needs to be taller than it does wider, and so we're going to go with that. So I have this folded in half, <clears throat> and I'm also going to pin this just because I don't want it moving um, while I'm cutting out the template shape. 
And we're also going to be cutting a wedge down here. So I will pin this as well. All right, so the top is where we're going to cut out our neck piece and we're going to cut it out the opposite of how we just cut out our pockets. Um, so we're going to do it with this angle here um, and it says place on fold. So that's the part we're gonna put on the fold, making sure it's flush with all of our edges. I'm gonna cut that away. All right, so the other thing we're going to do is um, measure in three inches. Um, right here. And from the three inch mark that we have drawn at the top right next to the neckline, all the way diagonally to the bottom corner, we're going to draw a line to connect these two and this is going to be the kind of wedge shape we're cutting out of one of these sides to create the angle of the uh, bib although you know what I'm thinking this looks too narrow maybe it was supposed to be it just says fold a bib piece in half. It doesn't say what side. Let me try this real quick. Because that piece is supposed to be, yeah, so. Hold on. If you fold it in half this way, then the neck would be right here. Maybe it is supposed to be wide because you cut out. Okay, see, I wish it told you this. Um, let me just try this out real quick. Glad I caught this before I cut. If we're cutting out the apron here, so then this would be the three inch mark. And this would be where you put the strap. So I do think it's supposed to be the wide piece. Just doesn't tell you that. Okay. Yeah, Jackie, I'm realizing because you cut off the edges because of the angle that that it will actually be the right size. But like this would be a really awkward bib size. But I just realized you're cutting off three inches on both sides. And so it would actually fit. Okay. All right. So let's do that instead. <laughs> this pattern is so it over explains all the others other things like make sure this is on the fold that this side should like it says it three times but then that it doesn't say at all okay let's pin this the other way and see how we feel about that so here we would have our neck I was like that gap did not look big enough to hold a strap okay Going to make sure this is my this is my three inch mark, and this is what I need to come all the way to this corner. Okay, there we go. That looks that looks much better for a strap right here. Okay, so we need to do this twice. So let's do this to this bib, and then to the next one. That's what they mean by measure twice, cut once, right? Okay. So here's our apron bib and I have to do that one more time to our other piece Make sure this is right yep. 
right way. Guys, the weather is so nice today. I'm surprised that if anyone's watching, you are not outside. I hope you're watching this from outside because it is so nice out. You know how in the summer you kind of get used to the weather being nice and you're just like, oh yeah, we, I could go out any day. But when you're coming out of winter, every warm day feels miraculous. <laughs> I'm thinking about making the sip and sews every other week in the summer, just before that reason, like wanting to spend time doing stuff outside. I feel like people sew a little bit less in the um, summer anyways. So I'll let you guys know if I decide to do that. Hi, Karen. We are almost done cutting our pieces for our farmhouse apron. Our neck hole. And we're almost done with the cutting, I believe. Can you hear all the kids outside? They are loving this. Okay. Okay, we have finished page one. Oh, tiny bit more cutting. Trim a one quarter inch wedge at the shoulders. Note the wide end of the wedge is at the neck area. Do both bib pieces. Okay, so it just wants us to mark a quarter of an inch in here and draw an angled line from this quarter inch to that corner. Actually, do this one more time. Okay, trim that. Perfect. One more time. Does anyone know what kind of fabric they're going to be using for their apron yet? I know you might not be um, making yours with me right now, but I'm curious if you have all your stuff picked out, if you've given it any thought. To me, that's the funnest part of any project is picking out the material. It's my favorite. All right, there's that. Let's cut on this line. And this line. Okay. All right, now we're done cutting and we're going to work on our neck strap and our waistband okay so our next couple steps involve these pieces so we're going to take our 
17 inch neck strap first, which is this piece. Uh, press it in half lengthwise. Stitch the long edge with a scant 3 8 inch seam. Use a turning device to turn it right side out. Okay, it says for a petite size trim to 16 inches long. And I have noticed that the sample we have at the shop is a little bit, the strap's a little bit big on me. So I'm going to go ahead and trim an inch off of this. But you can just follow the pattern or make it whatever size you want. All right, <clears throat> so I have this. And I'm going to, I'm actually, before I fold that, I want to do everything on my iron at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my 23 inch waistband between the two ties first and then I'm going to press the ties and the neck strap and everything at the same time. So press the seams open, fold over and press a 3 8 inch fold hem along each long edge, fold in half again and press. Okay, I'm just trying to visualize these instructions. Okay, I'm a pretty, like, I can picture things pretty well in my head most of the time, but sometimes these instructions, I'm just like, what is going on? Okay. So, let me see if I can get this camera set up here so that you guys aren't just watching the side of my face while I sew and iron. Alright, here's my little station. <clears throat> okay, I have my 23 inch waistband and one of my straps. So I'm going to sew them together. And it's having you sew everything at a half inch seam allowance. So, I know right where that is on my machine. I'm gonna go for it. And it also says to back stitch everything. Okay, take my other side of my, make sure you're doing these right sides together, of course waistband tying my tie to it. Okay. Okay, now that I have these, looking at my iron, I'm going to iron a lot of this stuff now. So I'm coming over here. See if I can take you guys with me. Perfect. Okay. So I'm supposed to fold this in half lengthwise. This is my neck strap. Um right sides together because then I'm going to sew it and then turn it. Okay. There's that. Okay, and then for my waistband and ties combo, I'm going to press my seams open first and then fold over and press a scant 3 8 inch single fold hem along each long side. So first I'll do these seams from when I sew them together, sew them, or press them open. Okay, pressing these open, and then 
a scant three eighths. I'm trying to think. So, I mean, obviously that's a little less than three eighths, but wouldn't that just be basically in between a quarter and three eighths? I guess so. All right. So I'm going to measure it at first and then I'm going to eyeball the rest of it. So a scant three eighths. About this. Why? I'm just going to eyeball the rest of it to that same length. This part might take a little bit. Pressing these really long seams or hems. I notice that a lot of garment sewing or anything like it, like an apron, there's a lot of pressing involved and makes your precision a lot better. But I am not a huge garment sewing person, so that's about all of the insight I have for you guys. I'm turning my my steam on and off because it's really hard to steam when I'm, uh, my fingers are so close. It will burn my fingers so quickly, so... Today, um, I applied for our marriage license. We are five, T minus five weeks away from this thing happening. So crazy. I was at the house today helping organize stuff, put things away. As we've gotten some items from our registry, we're just slowly trying to Organize it in the house. Matthew's living there now, so it can't be too much of a wreck. It'll drive me crazy. Um, but it was, it's a lot of fun to think about. Last little bit of this one, and then we have. The other side, yay. So much fun. Um, Barb, it's, uh, the show is until three, so you should be good. Single fold hem along each long edge. It says fold in half again and press, but we didn't fold it in half before. This is so confusing. Okay. All right. Let's measure this top edge. No. Just repeat.
Oh, I can smell they're building a fire outside. Vicky asks, I have a sewing room. I won't have a sewing room. Um, exactly. <laughs> but, um, it's an apartment. It's a one bedroom apartment, but it's a, it's a three unit building that Matthew owns. Um, and it's really nice. It's in Newport. It's like old and has like really nice hardwood floors and giant windows and stuff, which is amazing. Um, but it has like, um, two big living spaces and then the kitchen and then the bedroom. And so I think one of the living spaces, because we don't think we'll need a dining room right now, we'll eventually want one if we like move into a house, but I don't think we'll really need one right now. We're not totally sure yet, but, um, we're going to make one of the rooms more of like a office type room because, um, he needs a desk and I need a sewing space. <laughs> so I'm going to have, um, that room that we'll probably share, but I'll use more often to use as my sewing room with my, my desk and my storage and stuff. Um, and I'm really excited for that. So, um, yeah, I'll have, I'll have that room, but it's not like just my space. We'll see how it ends up. And if we need a dining room, we might have to hijack that room with the dining room table. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay. So I finished, um, folding all of those. And then at the end it says fold in half again and press. And I, I'm assuming it means in half, half long ways, but it has a dotted line right here, which makes me not totally sure if it means in half short ways or long ways. I'm going to look ahead to where we have the Mark the center of the waistband fold with a pin. Mark the skirt center with a pin, pin the waistband, folded edge to the top of the skirt. A half inch down, matching pins, top stitch the waistband fold. Eighth from the edge, securing the skirt. And then you're sewing the bib into the open side of the waistband. I was expecting that, but Okay, so I'm going to assume it's half long ways because that just makes sense to me. Because I know we're going to be folding it in half anyway, so let's just do that. I will turn on my steam for this part though because I do want it to be um, a little hotter. So I'm lining up my two folded sides now and pressing. It's crazy what a different steam makes because these ones I did without steam are kind of like loosening up a little bit, but when you do it with steam, it just like stays there. It's amazing.
getting dark out. Um, oh, Vicki, that's a great um, point. Yeah, one problem right now, so right now I'm in my, in my room, it's my sewing room, and I'm only in this room for a total of four months, so I can stand it for now, but my, my sewing room was in my, um, old room as well, and I found that anytime we were gonna, like, watch a movie or anything, I had to bring all my stuff downstairs, set it up, and, you know, to participate with everybody. So that is the bummer about having a totally separate sewing room. But Matt and I are not going to have a TV, but we did get a projector for like movie nights, but we're not very into just sitting and watching TV all the time. And so um, we'll just have a projector. Um, so hopefully that won't be as big of an issue with this and we could set, even if we wanted to watch a movie together we could set up the projector anywhere so <clears throat> that'll be fun almost done with all of this pressing straps take so much pressing As I'm trying to visualize what was on the pattern, I feel like I would do it differently, but I don't know if I should try to change it because <laughs> I haven't done it the right way yet. So, hmm. all right, I guess we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. All right. Our next step is going to be to turn or to sew this and then turn it right side out. And then, um, we need our pocket, fold it right sides together, stitch around the perimeter with a half inch seam, leaving a two inch opening for turning, use back tacks, trim the seam to a quarter inch and clip the curves, turn it right side out and press flat. Okay, so we'll still have a, a little bit more pressing here and there, but I think that was the most of it besides when we do the... Um, hem on the actual skirt, then that will be um, a little bit different. But let's go back to the machine and do um, stitch the long edge with a 3 8 inch seam. And I don't often use a 3 8 inch seam, so let me see where I am. It's a little bit wider than my presser foot, but not by much. Also, I have thread in my machine that matches my fabric. It's like a peach colored thread. So consider that. You'll be top stitching a lot to make sure it's the thread color you like. All right. Okay, so to turn this, I'm gonna get it started like this, and then I'm going to take the turned corner of my purple thing and have it help me shove this through here. It's like gonna scoop the fabric and push it up. Push it up. I wonder if you could also do this with the flat side. It might be better. I also know that you could do this with a chopstick. That was my replacement before I had a purple thing. But this is great for turning corners. It also suggests um, using a bodkin, which I do not have.
I have not been doing much wedding planning the past couple weeks because all the rest of what has to be done is fairly last minute stuff. And I'm realizing that next week will mark like one month out. And so then I'll, I'll have a lot of stuff to do. So things are getting kind of crazy or they're about to. Right. Once I have this turned right side out, um, use a body pin or other turning device to turn the strap right side out. Um, it doesn't tell me to press it, but I'm going to at some point, I'm sure. If it doesn't tell me to, I'm going to do it anyways. Um, okay, and then we're going to do our pocket. Stick my finger in this hole and try to just pull it up. Yeah, there we go. This is just the right size where any smaller it would be a lot harder to turn out. But this is working pretty well. Okay. There we go. That's my next strap. Um, fold the pocket in half, right sides together. Um, I'm gonna iron it actually, just to make sure it stays right sides together. Even though we're probably gonna be passing it in the opposite direction next. Um, with a half inch seam, and then we're going to trim it later to a quarter inch seam. You're going around a curve here, so make sure you go slower around the curves and like ease into it, maintaining that half inch seam allowance. And this is going to be my turn section, so I'm going to back stitch and cut. And trim the seam to a quarter inch. And I'm going to snip my curved uh, pieces a little bit just so it doesn't bunch up and cause puckers right there. Okay. Using this hole I left, I'll turn it right side out. Okay, I'm actually going to use my purple thing here too to poke out this corner. Make sure that's a nice sharp corner. And what I also like to do to get these seams to be um, crisp is I like to drag the purple thing along there as I like finger press it down to make sure that it's completely out to the stitches of this seam and there's not any like folds in there. Do that. Okay, so here's our nice little curved piece. Um, and it doesn't tell me to stitch that closed yet because that's probably going to get closed when we top stitch it onto the apron. So I am going to press it and um, I'm going to turn going to go ahead and turn this under and iron it like that and then um, and then we'll top stitch it down later. Okay, so that's 
what it looks like. Can set this aside. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, iron this uh, neck strap down too. I need to fill my iron with some more water real quick. Okay, I'm just going to steam this down. And when you're doing that, I'm just like working that seam to make sure, again, it's right um, at the edge of the stitching. You're not getting any unwanted folds in there. So there's our neck strap. All right, moving on to the next part. We have our bibs. Bib pieces. Here we go. Um, pin the bib pieces right sides together. Stitch the neck opening with a half inch seam, being careful not to stretch because this is a curve. Um, repeat with the side seams. Trim the seams to a quarter inch wide. Okay. So, I have my bib and my pins. I'm just going to pin one of these sides together and then I'll pin the other side together. Is anyone sewing their apron with me tonight? What I'm learning from you guys is you like to watch now and do it later or watch the replay when you're ready to make it. So always curious who's at their machine while they watch. Okay. Have these two sides pinned. Just need to, I'm gonna put it on a flat surface for this next part. Pin the curve. Jenny, yeah. Uh, all right. Here's my pins on my curve. So we're going to leave the bottom open and the shoulder parts open. And we're sewing them both with an eight in with a half inch seam and then we're trimming it to a quarter inch wide and clipping our curves. Okay, I'm gonna do this one first. This is also going to be a bit stretchy because this is an angle. It's not a 45 degree angle, but it's still not on the straight grain. 
So make sure that you're careful not to stretch this part as well. I'm noticing that my edges don't quite line up on this side, but they do on this side. So I'm going to do it according to the side that does line up. And I'll just trim it right here because that just means my template was off a little bit. Um, so as long as they match, I don't think it matters um, like that. I don't think it's going to matter that much because you're not trying to line this piece up with anything. All right. All right, I'm going to trim this to a quarter inch, <clears throat> all of them, and trim the seams to, uh, and clip the curves. So, can't even type and watch at the same time. No way I can sew and watch. That's funny. Um, Barb, yeah, I know the pace is kind of hard. Because um, if I you know, slow down a lot, then, um, oh, I didn't even sew my other straight edge. Um, then I feel like the replay would be really annoying to watch, so it's hard for me to decide, like, which one to do, to go slower than usual or just to go my regular pace and <clears throat> whatever, so. Okay, I didn't do my other straight edge. Let me do that real quick. Okay. Snip. Okay. And then trimming the side seams to about a quarter of an inch. So I'm interested why, like, I know that we're trimming it so that the bulkness, like, it, the bulk doesn't build up, but in my head, I'm always like, so then why didn't we just sew a quarter inch seam instead of sew a half inch and then trim it to a quarter? And I think it's to allow for error, maybe, to sew it like that. I mean, obviously, the pattern is allowing for a half inch of seam allowance, but I'm like... Then couldn't she make the pattern just allow for a quarter inch? I don't know. I don't know if it's allowing for error because I've noticed that on lots of clothing patterns. I've never understood why you do that. Okay, but it says don't turn right sides out yet because we're going to put the neck strap in the shoulder holes that we left. But first, it's going to have us hem the skirt. So um, believe it or not, we are not that far away from finishing. This is a pretty simple, all things considered, apron. Um, 
Okay, so let's grab our skirt. <clears throat> Um, and what we're going to do is stitch a double 3 8 inch hem on the apron sides. Fold over a quarter inch and press. Okay, fold over a quarter, a quarter of an inch and press, then fold over again 3 8 of an inch and press. That's what it's trying to say. Um, Stitch the hem close to the inside folded edge. Repeat for the bottom hem, pin if needed along the curve. Okay, I'm going to, um, this is our, our last bit of ironing. And, oh, do, 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 do. <clears throat> and I'm going to do it over here. Doing the sides first. We're gonna fold under a quarter of an of an inch. And then we're going to fold under another 3 8 of an inch, which is really just a tiny bit bigger than what you just did. 3 8 of an inch is just an eighth of an inch bigger than a quarter. So we'll fold that under again, and this is so that we have no raw edges. And I'm just eyeballing this. And I'm actually going to steam it quickly on top of what I just did. So it steams down a little bit more securely. Okay, next flat side or straight side. Quarter. I'm going to turn my steam on. Get a last little power press. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to stitch this down before I do the bottom hem because um, that way it'll all be fold, uh, stitched down for when I fold up this bottom part down here. So I'm going to go back and forth a little bit. Um, okay, and it doesn't give us a seam allowance, it just says to stitch close to the fold, so that's nice and easy. I don't think I really need to backstitch for this, but I'm doing it anyway. 
Okay. I love how a finished hem looks. It looks so nice. So crisp. Okay, so now that those sides are done, I'm ready to do the bottom of my skirt, and I'm also going to press out this um, fold that's still here from when it was on the bolt. Okay, got that. Just gonna do. It, it kind of won't angle the way I want it to, so it keeps listening if it cooperates with me. Okay. So this curve, it's not very, it's not a very extreme curve. It's a pretty like gradual curve, but you still kind of need to ease it into submission. <laughs> so going to go slowly and I am going to steam it as I go a little bit because I really want it to stay in place because it's, because it's the curve. So far so good. Guys, can see what I'm doing. I feel like it's a uh... um doing narrower hems on curves. I have found is a little bit easier to control and a little bit of a better way to like ease it in there. So um. I'm glad for the quarter inch hem, quarter inch fold first. Almost done with the first one, and I have to go back one more time so that our raw edges are folded in. I'm not keeping the steam on the whole time just because of my fingers. I really want to get those um, heat resistant thimbles, which are for just that, but I don't have, we're out of them right now. Get more soon. Because I'm thinking, I don't know if it'll annoy me to have something on my fingers because you have to be so like, you know, precise in handling the fabric, but it'll be really nice to not have to be so careful about the steam.
because my fingers have to be pretty close to this iron, especially at the curve, on the curved side. All right. Hey, Marcia. <laughs> yes, isn't it gorgeous? It's the bookish collection from Art Gallery. I love this fabric. Okay. Finally have it pressed under twice. Going to stitch pretty close to um, pretty close to the edge here. All right, um, this is the Baby Lock Crescendo. It has amazing lighting. My room has such horrible lighting. I've never had a problem. I think it, they call it stadium lighting. There's two lights right here and then this giant light right here. So it's really nice. Okay, finished hemming the skirt and the sides, or the, the bottom and the sides of the skirt. Um, our next step is going to put the be putting the neck strap in. So I have my neck strap here that I um, pressed. Yes, I like this length. Okay, and then I have my bib here, which is still right sides together. So I'm going to put um, this between the two layers. So my hand is inside here and stick the neck strap up here and then pull it till it's just like coming out a little bit. It's going to say slip the ends of the neck strap inside the two bib pieces, center and align the ends of the strap with the shoulders raw edges, then pin. The following diagram is to show the position of the neck strap but it will be between the two layers so make sure it's between these two layers. Um, going to pull it down just a little bit so that it's flush with the raw edge here and then pin it. So that's the one side. And then you want to make sure that it's not twisted either. So I'm going to 
make sure it is the right direction and then stick it up through this other other side here and make it flush with these raw edges and pin okay I get to go on to page three, the final page. Stitch across the shoulders with the quarter inch seam, catching the strap in the seam. Curve the seam slightly at the corners just past the next strap. And it has a little diagram to show you how the curve should be positioned. Um, start and end the seam with back tacks. Trim the curved corners, then turn the bib right side out. See, this one's a quarter inch seam without doing the whole half and then trim thing, so. I don't know, guys. I don't know what the purpose is there. Okay, so a quarter inch and then curve it down to meet the other seam. I'm going to go back to my other side and try. Okay, so can you see this? I kind of curved it a little bit at these corners, so I'm going to trim just a tiny bit off at these corners so it looks like this, okay? Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now we can trim the curved corners, turn the bib right side out. Look at that! Awesome. Okay. So I do want to press this. possible it wasn't possible with my neck strap but if at all possible I like to stick my hand inside what I'm pressing to stick my fingers out along the seam to make sure it's like really coming right to the edge there's no folds and then I press it all the way down Do my curve. Um, the first time I ever made an apron, I actually have to show you guys tell you guys this story. The first time I ever made an apron, I wanted it to look like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And you know how she has a triangle apron. So I laid down on a piece of white paper of white fabric and I told my cousin to draw a triangle around me. So she did. And then I got a piece of turquoise fabric because Blue Belle's dress was white and turquoise and I sewed it to the edge. Um to this triangle like it was like a triangle didn't hem, didn't anything. All I did was sew two little straps on the side of this waist and I thought, oh my gosh, it's perfect. This is the easiest thing in the world. And I put it on and then I realized like it was unraveling and I just didn't understand raw edges yet. And I was like, Belle's apron didn't do this. <laughs> As if you could see the 
um, unraveling on the cartoon character's apron. But that was the first time I ever made an apron. So this is drastically different. And my cousin was afraid of the sewing machine. And so she hand cranked, hand cranked it. She just used the hand crank of the machine to sew. Luckily, it was just those two little seams of the strap we each made one of the strap she was sewing now so it didn't take forever but it drove me crazy i was like oh my gosh just do the foot pedal and it'll go so fast because for some reason she went first so then i had to wait for her to be done but that's one of my very first sewing memories we were probably uh, eight maybe i don't know all right look at this awesome bib we have here Looks amazing. So now we're just going to put the two pieces together, but first we have to put our pocket on our apron. So it has like a measurement for you. Two inches from the side and seven inches from the bottom should be your left hand corner. But I'm just going to eyeball it because you guys know me. I don't really care about the specifics when it comes to this kind of thing. So I'm just going to lay it out on my table and eyeball it. Um, and remember, one of these sides is still open, so you top stitching this down will actually be you stitching that side closed as well. Okay, nice and easy, easy peasy. We're almost done. Okay, just gonna top stitch this pocket on here. done with the pocket. Now to connect these two together, we're going to grab our waistband and ties. Um, mark the center of the waistband and fold with a pin. So let's fold this in half. Pin the waistband, uh, mark the skirt center with a pin first. Okay. Pin the waistband folded edge to the top of the skirt, a half inch down, matching the pins. Top stitch the waistband fold, an eighth of an inch from the edge, securing the skirt to the waistband. Stitch all the way to the end of the ties. Okay, see, this is how, this is how I would have done it. I would have taken, okay, if you guys want to try, I, I don't, I'm trying to decide if I want to change the pattern or not, like do my own thing. Um, I think what I would have done is taken this raw edge of the bib 
and um, maybe there's, I'm trying to see if there's a reason they didn't do this. Um, we have this, we have this, put them the middle right sides together with the waistband in the middle. And then when you open it up like this, you would top stitch this down. Maybe that's the same thing that we're doing, but it's just different, like it's backwards. Okay, I'm just gonna do it like this and if I ever make it again, I might alter the pattern, we'll see. Because what you're doing is the, the open side is at the top and the fold is at the bottom. And you're pinning it along the, like this is just a little awkward. You're pinning it, you don't ever sew things like this. You're top stitching it to this part of the apron. So you're not doing it right sides together and then, and then opening anything. You're just sewing it directly onto the top of it. And that's the part that's weird to me. But maybe there's a reason they did it like that. Okay. I'm actually going to position you guys this way so that you can see, because I feel like this is strange enough, you might want to be able to see this. So I have the skirt top with the pin at the middle. Here we have this with the fold, and like, how am I supposed to know how far up it is. I just don't like this part. Like I can't tell how much they overlap. I mean I can kind of eyeball it but Um, and this is also curved too, so make sure you're easing that in there as well. Because see, now you're going to have this raw edge exposed on the inside. Oh, hold on, I missed a step. Um, stitch the pocket to the skirt, use back tacks, finish the top edge of the skirt with a triple zigzag or other finishing edge. That's the part that I missed. That makes more sense. That was at the end of the pocket step. So let's finish this edge real quick. I mean, it's still kind of weird to me, but I'm gonna zigzag this edge and then come back and pin that on. I'm not gonna move the camera again. I'm just gonna do this. It does say triple zigzag, so I guess it wants us to do that multiple times.
Oh, I know. This is what I was trying to do. Okay. I feel like, okay, I think this is what I was trying to do. I'd actually put these, I would actually put the bib and the um, skirt wrong sides together. This is what I was visualizing and trying to make happen. Open this up and, you know, put them in and sew them on the edge. And then I would top stitch it down. That's what I was trying to figure out. I'm still going to follow this pattern. I just can't figure out why they're doing it like this. Okay. I have this exact edge. I made a pillowcase like that once, and I think that's why I'm thinking of it. Where it had like a, a like a third cuff layer that was like that. Okay, we're just eyeballing this here, half inch down. There's, I feel like there's not really a way to do this better. Um, and what I'm going to do is because you're supposed to sew all the way to the edge of the ties which is off of the apron skirt um, I'm going to start at the middle of the skirt and work my way to the end of each tie I also just realized that my ties aren't finished oh I see it's the last step is to finish the ends of the ties Okay, so this is a curved edge, um, so it will kind of like ruffle down, but that's kind of what makes it so cute when it's done. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to start at the middle and work my way to the ends of the ties here. Um, turn a 3 8 inch double hem on the ends and top stitch. It wants me to do that at the end, but I think I want to do it right now before I sew the ends. I'm going to fold it under like this first and then like this because I'd rather it look like that than like that. So I'm going to do that real quick and then sew this on. Mm -mm. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, hold on. This is how I had it. If I do it a certain direction, it's like upside down. So, oh my gosh, it's there. And I'm going to do this. If you guys want to do it how the pattern has, by all means do it. I'm just changing this one thing. I love how this checker 
this gingham looks with this floral print makes me so happy. Okay, I have to be careful not to sew on a pin. Is exact still on. So now I'm going off of the apron and just tying or sewing the ends of the tie. says you can trim it to your desired length but I don't know what my desired length is I'm just gonna do it like this easy enough to fix if I get annoyed with it all right oh that looks so nice having that finished edge there all right let's turn this around and do it from the other from the middle to the other side One quick note about doing really long pieces like this, I find that less control is more helpful. If my hands were right here, then anything I did could possibly take it off the edge. So once it's lined up straight, I just like to have a little bit of guidance holding it back here and it's going completely straight right now. If your hands are too close and they're shaky at all, then it will not help as much as it will hurt. Oh, 
All right, let's get this bib on here. Finish this up. Center the bib between the two layers of the waistband a half inch down. Pin aligning the waistband folded edges on the front and back side. Top stitch the waistband an eighth inch from the edge catching both sides of the waistband. Oh, this is so cute. I love it. Okay, so I have to find the middle again. Just a little pause there. I think we're back now. Okay. Stick this in here. And because I pressed this so that both of my folded edges are exactly flush, um, I, I'm hoping I don't need to worry about making sure that they're catching on both sides when I'm stitching. So that's one reason to be precise with your um, pressing at that step so that they line up perfectly when you're sewing the, two, the bib between the two layers. This is our last step. If you've been watching with me since the beginning, I'm impressed. This is one of our long projects. Right. Here we go. I'm just going to back tack once here so it's not too thick and obvious. Okay, when I get to the end here, I'm going to um, pivot it to stitch the end closed. Pivot, it's a short little one. Cut. Trim off our little tails. One more line to do, guys, and then we're done. This is about a two-hour project, I think. Get that strap out of the way.
I meant to hit my pivot button, not my foot cutter. It's okay. Doing this last little end of the tie here. You know, as I'm thinking about this, I have two friends getting married soon. Um, I'm in one wedding and Matt's in the other, so definitely wedding season. But I'm like, oh, this would be a fun gift to give to one of my newly married friends. All right, let's see the finished product. Put these pins out so I don't stab myself. Okay, guys, I hope you had fun watching. I know that sometimes because this is live and I can't edit it, if you're not sewing along with me, it might get kind of boring. So I encourage you to grab your project and sew with me on Thursday nights or rewatch this later when you're ready to do your project. If you need to be able to pause it um, or go back and rewatch different parts, but this is what we have. It's so cute. I'm so happy with it. I just love how this um, gingham looks with this floral. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, it was a pleasure. I hope you had fun. I'll see you guys either at the um, Quilters Day Out Quilt Show on Saturday or at the Wednesday Live next week or at the Sew Along next week. Oh, hey guys. Okay, good. <laughs> I know that sometimes there's like not, there's not a lot of comments going on. So sometimes I don't know who all is like actually watching, but, um, thanks Karen and Debbie and Jean and Vicky. All right. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.